Hi everyone, this is Shalu Kumar again from Oski Nurse Training, Cambridge. I'm an experienced Oski Nurse Trainer for the NMC Oski exam in UK and also the lead trainer for Oski Nurse Training, Cambridge. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am back with another NMC Oski video for your revision. If you like my videos, please press the like button now and subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friends because my intention is to help as many nurses as possible to uh, do a good quality revision for their exam and pass it hopefully first time okay uh, so and keep those comments coming they do really help me guide me in a way what do you want to see from me next okay so today's video today's video is uh, you've been asking me for a long time because i've covered all the rest of the topics for evidence-based practice so this is the last one it's about restraint somebody just asked me last week again please can i cover this so i'm going to cover this in this video okay so this is your evidence-based practice station which is your written station in the exam uh, you can go to my channel and on the evidence-based playlist it's all the other topics have been already covered okay so so we are going to look at restraint today we will look what restraint is we will look at a scenario and then we will look at our answers how to write it okay so it's the complete station so by the end of the video you will know exactly what to write in your exam so keep watching uh, so uh, so you, evidence based practice is your 10 minute written station you will be given a scenario and then you will be given little a little uh, research article to read and then your job is then to write your answers as bullet points your recommendation so you need to read the scenario uh, have a look at the article and then conclude okay so you need to write your conclusions or your recommendations as bullet points okay so that's what it is now uh, they can give you uh, obviously a study but uh, there is obviously we already know that there is uh, answers we already know because if we know if we have read about the evidence-based practice around a topic then we should know what are the right recommendations anyway uh, so because 10 minutes is not enough to fully read the study understand it then start concluding it so you should already have a very good understanding of uh, what are the correct recommendations for that topic for the evidence-based practice station um, so that's what what you should do um, because like i said 10 minutes will not be enough for you to read the study in exam and fully conclude it so you should have very very good understanding right okay so let's look at the topic so let's talk about restraint so what is restraint restraint is like uh, restricting somebody's freedom isn't it that's the simple word to put it whether you do that physically or whether you do chemically by sedation or whatever else so it's restricting patient freedom uh, uh, and it, it could be physical restraint or chemical restraint in medical health care so what we are talking about that's what we're talking about here is a good practice what does the evidence and research says well research clearly says that it's not uh, which is not a surprising answer because restricting anybody's freedom is never a good answer never a good idea so research is not going to show anything different uh, so we're going to look at the scenario now and then we will write our answers so let's have a look at the scenario so you may get similar scenario in exam probably will be very similar and then we will write the answer so you are a nurse in charge on a dementia ward one of your nursing staff amelia is in uh, is informing you that one of the patient is very confused one of her patients she is looking after is very confused agitated angry and showing self-harm behavior and may need to be restrained so she is considering that the patient may need to be restrained so she is asking your advice uh, so as a nurse in charge she's asking your advice what advice will you give her okay so that's the situation basically that's the scenario and then as you can see on the next screen i found this study when i was researching this article so i have put that on here so you might get same or you might get different i don't know uh, but you know the conclusion points are the same okay because you should already know those points so let's have a look at our next screen now how are we going to write these answers so um, like I said study will help you but you, uh, to start a from start from the study in exam will be very difficult okay but it may help you but you should already know your answers anyway so let's have a look uh, on the next screen now 
so i have read the article and include, conclude that restraining patients should only be done as last resort once all other alternatives have been ex uh, explored okay so we need to explore other options is there any alternative methods which can prevent restraining patients okay but if it needs to be it should be the last resort okay so that's the conclusion basically now we make our recommendations below so the first point i will explain to amelia who is my colleague that compassionate communication may prevent the need to restrain patients so what does that mean uh, that means is basically if we can have a caring and compassionate communication with the patient and make them understand um, how their behavior may put them at risk uh, and they understand you and uh, you know and that behavior changes that may prevent the need for restraining okay so that's what that point is making so i will explain to amelia that compassionate communication may prevent the need to restrain patients Second one, I will consider that physical restraint may be necessary to promote the safety of staff and patients as a last resort after other options have been exhausted. So what does that mean? You, you tried everything, you communicated with the patient, you tried to do things different way and still patient is showing uh, a behavior which may put their own safety at risk, other patient safety at risk or staff safety at risk. Then you have no choice then it may be necessary to uh, to use restraint okay as a last resort so that's that point okay so i'll read again i will consider that physical strain may be necessary to promote the safety of staff and patients as a last resort after other options have been exhausted number three i will inform amelia that physical restraint may promote fear in patient and distress among staff so uh, that research does clearly show that it will promote fear in patient and and of course it's very dis emotionally very distressing for staff as well next one is i will consider that physical restraint may be perceived as a demonstration of power that staff display over patients what does that mean is that research shows that patient may see that this is a way of nurses um kind of uh, using this as a power thing over them uh, restraining as a way of uh, showing their power so that's what he means so i will consider that physical restraint may be perceived as a demonstration of power that staff display over patients number five i will explain to amelia that the use of physical restraint may create a loss of trust now this is an obvious one if you're going to restrict somebody's freedom i don't think there will be much trust left in that relationship so that will break down the relationship so i will explain to amelia that the use of physical restraint may create a loss of trust and a breakdown in patient and staff relationship so that's an easy one to remember so i hope you understand this topic a bit better now and why restraining is not a good idea but sometime we may have to use it as a last resort uh, so hopefully this will help you to write your answers in exam and hopefully have a deeper understanding of this topic so it's easy to remember when we understand something better we remember it better um, so uh, so i hope you like the video if you do like the video please like and subscribe share it with your friend go and check our google reviews and uh, visit us on oskinastraining.com email us on oskinastraining at outlook.com if you want to know more about our training and i will soon be back with another video for you so bye for now